In 1993, the American experimental physicist and Nobel Prize winner Leon Lederman published a book called The God Particle. The book was very good, but the title was ridiculous. A far better title would have been simply The Higgs Boson, although maybe that wouldn't have been quite as good for sales. The Higgs boson most definitely isn't a god particle, whatever that might mean. But exactly what is it, and why was its discovery in 2012 such a big deal? To answer that, we have to go back to the 1970s, when physicists realised there was a close connection between two of the fundamental forces in nature, electromagnetism and the so-called weak force, which only operates over short distances, smaller than the size of an atom. It was found that these two forces can be described within the same overarching theory, known as electroweak theory. Thanks to the unification of electromagnetism and the weak force, electricity, magnetism, light and some types of radioactivity can be understood in terms of a single underlying force. Electroweak theory also provided the basis for what's become known as the standard model. The equations of electroweak theory correctly described the particles that carry the electroweak force, photons in the case of electromagnetism and the W and Z bosons in the case of the weak force, except for one glaring problem. The theory predicts that all these particles should have zero mass. The photon does have zero mass, but the W and Z bosons are each about 100 times as massive as the proton. That seems to be a bit of a problem. Fortunately, there's a way around it. In 1964, theorists Robert Brout, Francois Angler and Peter Higgs came up with the idea of a field which pervades the universe and gives mass to any particle that interacts with it. It's become known as the Higgs field. Particles like the photon don't interact with the Higgs field at all, and so they don't have any mass. The more a particle interacts with the field, the heavier they will be. The W and Z bosons interact strongly, and so they have a relatively high mass. But that's just theory. How can we tell if the Higgs field really exists? The answer is that, like all fields, the Higgs field has an associated particle, the Higgs boson. If you imagine the Higgs field to be like a sea, the Higgs boson is like a wave on the surface. The theory behind the Higgs boson doesn't specify what its mass might be, but gives only a rough idea of the range in which it might lie. What was clear, however, was that if the Higgs boson existed, it could be manufactured only through colliding particles at very high energy. Attempts were made using the super colliders then available, the Large Electron-Positron Collider at CERN in the 1990s, and subsequently the Tevatron at Fermilab. These early efforts managed to narrow down the range of possible masses of the Higgs, but it was only after the Large Hadron Collider went into action that physicists were finally able to track down their quarry. On July the 4th, 2012, teams of scientists working at two separate experiments at the Large Hadron Collider, ATLAS and CMS, announced the discovery of a new particle with a mass roughly equal to that of two copper atoms and other characteristics consistent with the Higgs boson. The following year, François Englert and Peter Higgs were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for, as the committee described it, the theoretical discovery of a mechanism that contributes to our understanding of the origin of mass of subatomic particles. The Higgs boson was the final missing piece of the standard model, the scheme that is our best current description of the fundamental particles of matter and the forces by which they interact. But the standard model isn't the end of the story for physics because there are still many unanswered questions. Questions such as, where did all the antimatter in the universe go? Why is the expansion of the universe accelerating? And how can gravity be described at the smallest of scales? 
There may in fact be other types of Higgs boson. The standard model needs only one, but there are theories waiting in the wings such as supersymmetry which predict the existence of a whole family of Higgs particles.